Fesselin. Good afternoon all, my name is Wendell Daniel and welcome to Street Mike and we're coming to you live, live, live and direct from the bandstand here at Rushkin Park for the awakening, a drum salute for Sasha Johnson and I'm now going to introduce brother Leo Mahat. Sir. Greetings, my brother. Greetings to all of you, dear brothers and sisters, family, friends, and even those who might classify themselves as the enemies of the rise of our people here in the United Kingdom, throughout the Western Hemisphere and this world. Dear brothers and sisters, family, we are here today because we want to pay tribute, we want to salute, we want to honor we want to stand in solidarity with our dear beloved sister, Sasha Johnson, who unfortunately and tragically this time last year, one year on to the day, was assassinated or attempted to be assassinated, was attacked and shot with a deadly weapon. And since that day to this day, our dear beloved sister, has remained in a coma and we are here today to send out an energy and a vibration in order to ask the creator of the heavens and the earth to bless our sister to awaken to allow our sister to be able to return to her family members and her loved ones her two sons we in the community recognize our sister for the courageous stance in which she took as a young sister standing up for the liberation of our people. And we do not believe in coincidence. We don't think that it was some tragic accident when she was assaulted in that brutal fashion one year ago. And so we are calling on the Creator. We are calling on those ancestors who have always been in the struggle for our total and complete liberation. We are here today calling on our Creator to rise our sister up, if it is His will, to rise her up in order that she can have some quality of life, in order that she can one day be able to express herself and also that she may awaken in order to appreciate the tremendous love, honor, and respect that has been paid to her uh, since this tragedy unfolded. Dear family, and those of you who are listening, those of you who are watching, today we intend to spend several hours in this place and the aim and objective, the purpose, is to salute our sister, is to pay tribute to the power and the strength of women because, dear family, we live in a world where women oftentimes are not honored, are not respected, are not treated with the dignity and the sacredness that they deserve. So today, we intend to drum. We intend to send the enemy of our ancestral drums out into the ether, out into the atmosphere, in order that that vibration can be felt and reverberate all around this planet Earth. We are a people who are spiritual people. We believe in the power of spirit. We believe in the power of energy. And we are calling on our Creator to bring our sister 
to wakefulness. And we ask this in his name and in the name of his prophets and in the name of our great ancestors. And so, dear family, if you will stay with us today, view what it is that we have to say, view what it is that we intend to do, view the, the love and the spirit that we intend to generate and to engender toward our sister. We believe that she will feel the vibes and the energy coming from this place where we gathered one year ago when this tragedy unfolded. We are here again and we're sending a message to our enemies. We're sending out a message to those wicked demons who would want to cut the life of our sister short. That if it be one of us, two of us, three of us, or 1,000 of us, we have no intention of allowing this day, from this day forward, to pass us by without us acknowledging what happened on this day to our powerful, courageous young sister. And so, dear family, if you will stay with us today and observe this tribute, this salute to our beloved sister, Sister Sasha Johnson, and we send out uh, wishes, best wishes and love to her family, in particular her two sons, but also to her mother and sisters as well. So thank you for allowing us this brief moment to introduce our program today, and we look forward to touching base with you again very shortly. Thank you. My name is Brother Leo Muhammad. Thank you. Good afternoon to all of you who are watching. My name is Wendell Daniel and welcome to Street Mike. And you can see me now. So I'm just going to move the camera down. So my name is Wendell Daniel and welcome to Street Mike. And we are coming to you live, live, live and direct from Rushkin Park, which is just down the road from Denmark Hill Station. And like Brother Leo Mohammed has just said, today is going to be a very special day and there are going to be many activities taking place down here today. We are going to have drummers like you can hear in the background. It's going to be a drum salute. But we're also going to have libation, prayers, poetry, song. There is going to be so many things happening down here and we will be sending some powerful energies to our warrior queen, Sasha Johnson. And for all of you who are watching, we are currently live on YouTube at Street Mike Live Stream. We're also live on Facebook at Street Mike Live Stream. And we're on Facebook again live at Street Mike Podcast. So we're going to be here for five hours with a lot of activities taking place, a lot of drumming, libation, prayers, songs, poetry, readings. There's going to be so many things coming and taking place down here. And I will also be interviewing many people down here. So those of you who will be watching this online, especially at YouTube on the chats, if you are on the chat later on, I will be saying to you, send some questions via the chat and I will put those questions to the person I am interviewing. So let's listen to some drumming as people begin to 
to arrive, but there will be many people down here today. Many have been invited, many will be here. And it is going to be a great day. And the great thing, we start on time, we set the standards. If we say four o'clock, we go live. We don't go live at five or six o'clock. We were live early, so at four o'clock, as promised, Street Night is here. So let's listen, let's watch, and let's observe.
you are watching, just to let you know, we're actually technically still just setting up. And we are going to be here until nine o'clock tonight. And all you can hear at the moment is four drummers. Just imagine when you've got 20, 30, 40, 50 drummers, the sweet sound that is going to be coming from the bandstand here at Ruskin Park. And this was the location last year after we received the sad news that Sasha had been shot. And her friends and family and the community, we all came down to the hospital, which is just down the road. And Clive and myself found this place and we started drumming from this location for weeks and weeks. And when I look back at that footage, wow. But it was important to be back today, which is the anniversary, the sad anniversary of when Sasha was shot at a party in Peckham, Concert Road in Peckham. I've been to Concert Road on many occasions myself and it is sad but Sasha is still seriously ill but she's recovering and we are here today to send those positive vibes, the positive energy, just like what Brother Leo Mohammed has said, we're sending energy to Sasha, we're sending energy to her family, we're sending energy out to her boys, and we want to see Sasha back to doing what she does best, and that is engaging and fighting for the community and later on this week there will be another event being held for Sasha and unfortunately I might not be able to attend that event because I have another live streaming event but I'm planning to be there but it will be very late. It won't be at the start. So, you know, street night live stream, we are very busy now. Every day we're doing different things. Most of it paid events. But it is important to go out and help and support the community. And I hope you're loving what you're seeing. I hope you're loving what you're hearing. And today, like I said, we're going to get poetry. We're going to get libation. We're going to get prayers. We're going to get the spoken word, meditations, poetry, and drumming. And I'm now going to move the camera and show a very important picture that many of you have seen. And this photograph is, I love this image. It's an iconic image. And that was taken by myself down at Jubilee Park in Edmonton. And that is such an important picture now. Relevant. But let's listen to the drummers as we prepare to bring you a spectacular drum salute for Warrior Queen. Sasha Johnson.
This song was given to us from Baba Ade, Baba Ade, who watches over us from ancestral lands. It says, let's pay our respect before we begin. And it is fitting that we speak our mother tongue because we know English is not our first language, that we bless the space. Call in Ibao. Hmm. Yes, Ibao. Pay our respects. And we give thanks. And we bless this place. And we bless this space with all that we know, with the incense and the lights and the drums, with nature, with water, but most importantly with our intention. <laughs> we are gathered here potently, rejoining our energy energy for this space, this place, if in honor, in upliftment, in empowerment of our beloved sister. Call her name. Call her name. Ashe, 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 Ashe. She walks in the darkness. How long has she been in her coma? How long? Thank you. She's been there one year, and we are here to let all the energies know that need to know that we walk with her. Sasha, you are working hard, Empress. And we say ashe to your journey. We say ashe to your liberation. We say ashe to your healing. Because as you walk, you carry us too. So we hold energy, we hold energy for you, Sasha. You hear the word sound of nature. So as Sasha walks between worlds, we must be aware that so do we. As Sasha sits and lies in her stillness, we must know that that's where our power lies too in our stillness. I say, hey. So let's go deeper into our stillness, into our hearts. As she goes further, we travel too. And we'll always have the beat of the drum to guide us through. One step at a time, heartbeats. One step at a time. A poor in honor of nature, nurture, that sustains us. I pour in honor of all the healers and leaders and teachers on the planet who guides us. I pour in honor of the family, the ancestral family of Sasha Johnson. You know what work you do. 
Hold her ever closer. Let it be your will for her empowerment, our empowerment, her upliftment. And we hold the family strong with this foundation that they are supported, they feel support, that they are loved, that they really feel the love that surrounds them. And that we continue to uplift, empower, embrace our power in reflection, in honor, in liberation and upliftment of Sasha. and pour in your own honour. Do you want to pour? Take the water. And you can just, as you feel, We are one. We are many. We are one. We are many. We are one. And we come together strong in strength and unity.
Good afternoon to all of you watching. My name is Wendell Daniel and we are Street Night. We are coming to you live, 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 live and direct from Ruskin Park in Denmark Hill. Let's listen as the tempo gets higher. My name is Wendell Daniel and we're currently coming to you live, live, live and direct from Rushkin Park in Denmark Hill and this is the drum salute for Sasser Johnson and we're just at the beginning and over the next few hours there's going to be a lot, 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 lot more drummers and people coming down to this location. This is only the start. People are working and they are making their way down towards Rushkin Park. And this is the drum salute for Sasha Johnson, who was shot and wounded on the 23rd of May, 2008. 21, so it's a year when Sasha was injured, and we are here drumming tonight, sending her some positive energies, and what you are getting now is a thing called libations, libations, and later on I will get people to explain the meaning of libations. There's also going to be meditations, prayers, the spoken word, poetry, and you're hearing in the background drumming. And there are going to be so many drummers down here this evening. And it is going to be amazing event down here and those 
those of you who know Mavina Newton, Mavina cannot attend today and she has passed on her apologies. I spoke to Mavina this morning and I will try to do my best to see if I can connect with Mavina later on and let's see if the technology will work but this is a an, an important event for warrior queen Sasha Johnson and that energy is being sent out to her and we've got so many people who are going to be speaking down here today and when I was down here last year that was such an emotional event after discovering that our queen had been seriously injured but today is not the day to go into the reasons why a trial collapsed that's for another day but today is about our queen all of the great things she done what she meant to so many people and we are sending that positive creative energies to her family her sons her mum her sisters her friends and all of those people around the world who love Sasha Johnson and they want to see her back at the forefront doing what she does best and that is campaigning standing up for the rights of people and I had the pleasure to meet Sasha on so many occasions. I'm one of the few people who filmed Sasha in detail. I spent a lot of time with her and any of you who know Street Mike will know I'm not a clip person. I'm not a person into one minute clips. I do detail because detail is important to finding out things and I've interviewed Sasha for an hour outside of the Houses of Parliament after the Ethnic Disparities report was published. I've spent so many, so much time with her. And, you know, all of you who have se who has seen that iconic photograph of Sasha in Jubilee Park in Edmonton with the drums and let me put my camera on that photograph. You've all seen the picture. That is such an amazing photograph. And you won't believe Street Mike is a photographer. And I actually took that photograph myself. And that photograph is now so relevant as we celebrate and we do this for our queen, Sasha. Johnson and we've got many people who are going to be talking today. We've already had an introduction at 4 p.m. by Brother Leo Mohammed. So I spoke with Brother Leo at the weekend to make sure that this event started at the advertised time and he's the same as me. Punctuality is so important. It's not saying we start at four o'clock and at six o'clock you're still waiting. We're not dealing with them kind of thing. Punctuality. When we say four o'clock, we mean we start at four o'clock. And we did start at four o'clock. And this evening is going to be amazing. But what I will say like what you're seeing, give me a thumbs up, make your comments down below, share and follow. Brother Leo, Leo.
just to let you know, let me... now going to be happening is that Brother Leo will now be explaining the significance of the drum. So Brother Leo, over to you. So brothers and sisters, those of you who are tuned in to this tremendous tribute and salute to our dear sister Sasha Johnson, what we wanted to do at this moment in time is just to give you a brief understanding of why we believe that this drumming is so critically important. You know, in our tradition from the mother continent of the drumming was always something that was very, very important to us as a people. And we use drums in so many different and powerful ways as original people. We literally could speak from village to village using the drum using the language of the drum. We could heal illnesses and different maladies as a result of the energy and the vibration that could be generated as a result of the drum. When the enemy of our people captured us nearly 500 years ago, brought us across the Atlantic Ocean in the holds of ships and attempted to destroy us as a human reality, one of the first things that they did was to ban the drum. The drum was disallowed. We were not allowed to play that instrument because they understood the power and the energy that can be generated via, via this drum. And so hence the reason for us being disallowed. But the ingenuity, the power of the original people, of black people, of Africans meant that we understood that the drum beats was akin to the heartbeat, was akin to our pulse, was akin to the energy of life. And therefore, as a people, we found whatever way and whatever means that we could to make a joyous sound to, onto the Lord, to, to make that energy to vibrate irrespective and regardless of what the enemy attempted to do. And today in 2022, when you hear these drums, Understand that this is not a skill, this is not an energy that's ever been lost from the Africans, from the original man and the original woman, the black man and the black woman of planet Earth. It's something that we have carried in our DNA, it's something that we've carried in our genes. 
It's something that is being revived now. It represents a revival. It represents an awakening. And as time unfolds, you will see that this mighty sound of the drum will return to planet Earth in such a way that the enemy will not be able to stand it because he understands today that as a people there is a vibe, there is an energy that's missing from the earth and we intend to bring it back. We intend to bring it back with the right pulse, with the right heartbeat, with the right drum beat and we're sending out this energy today to the creator of the heavens and the earth in order that he may facilitate the awakening of our beloved sister. We believe that regardless of the degree of the injury that she has suffered, we know that Almighty God Allah is able to heal, has the power to heal. And we believe that us gathering like this, making this joyous sound onto heaven, onto the Creator, we can inspire the God to realize that we love our sister, that we love one another because unfortunately in the black community what has often been missing is a genuine love, a genuine energy for one another. And what we're here to demonstrate today in this vigil, in this salute, is our love for our sister. And we will continue to play the drum until the energy reaches her and she feels it in her soul and she is once again able to awaken and return to her family, return to those who love and care about her. Dear brothers and sisters, we hope that you are picking up the vibration, picking up the energy coming out of Ruskin Park today on this day, the 23rd day of May, one year to the day that our sister was shot down. We pray that you can feel in our spirit that we're not depressed today, we're not down today. We have an energy and a spirit of the warrior. We have that energy and that spirit because that's what our sister displayed when she became an activist in the liberation struggle of our people. And we can't stand before this camera and stand before this world as weak people today, pushing out weak vibration. We have to stand today as a powerful people, the powerful people that we are, reflecting the power that our sister generated, a power that frightened the powers that be. And that's why we know for a fact that her injury, her wounding, did not come about via accident or coincidence. We know that this is by design, the same way in which they took down our brother Steve Biko, the same way in which they took down our leader Samora Michelle, the same way in which they took away Nelson Mandela, the same way in which they took away Winnie Mandela, because many of us think that these people died from natural causes. There is nothing natural about being persecuted your whole life and trying to survive in a hostile environment that the enemy creates specifically for the demoralization of our people. And so, brothers and sisters, stay with us today as we send out this energy to awaken and to revive our beloved sister, Sasha Johnson. Thank you.
Sit down.
want me to say? What you want me to say? What you want me to say? Dance and praises every time, alright. Dance and praises every time. We give thanks and praises. We give thanks and praises. We give thanks and praises. We give thanks. Thanks and praises. Thanks and praises. Thanks and praises. Thanks and praises. Yo 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 yo. We give thanks and praises. We invite positive energies, divine spirits, ancient ancestral wisdom, abundance of love, healing, and freedom comes into the well-being of this space for Sasha Johnson's well-being. Say, say, yo. Can I marry my Kuro Kuzai? Mr. Kuro, give thanks and praise for life, for the meaning and purpose of life, for the power of the African spirit, for the healing power of the African spirit, the united power of the African spirit, the indomitable power of the African spirit. ancestors. We have the power to overcome all challenges and all forces of evil. When we are one, when we are united, we are invincible, we are unstoppable. And I feel that power here in this moment, in this space. Send I man. ancestral wisdoms, abundance of love, healing and freedom into this space for the well-being of Sasha Johnson and all the melanin-rich nations of the universe. We give thanks and praises. I hope you enjoyed that. We get crystal clear sound down here at Rushkin Park and now there are so many drummers in the bandstand. The floor is beginning to rock. And you may see there's a shake, but the floor is rocking. And this is one for me. I've never experienced this before. So in the future, I may need a, 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 I've got a Chris tripod but I may need one that absorbs the movement from the drums. But don't forget, if you like Street Mike, give me the thumbs up, make your comments down below, share and follow. And what you must also do, switch on your notification bell and every time Street Mike goes live on Facebook, at Street Mike Livestream, on Facebook again for the second time at Street Mike Podcast. And we also go live on YouTube. So if you like what you're seeing and hearing, subscribe to Street Mike on Facebook and YouTube. And this is the, the awakening a spiritual revival event. One year on, we salute our warrior queen, Sasha Johnson. We 
are still burning a fire, taking a stand at the bandstand. And today, it's a day of meditations, libations, prayers, spoken word, poetry. And like you can hear, there is African ancestral drumming. And this place is rocking. It is for me to be down here, to be bringing this event to you live and direct on Street Mic. It is a pleasure. And if you want Street Mic to live stream an event for you, why don't you give me a call? My number is available on the web. If you want me to live stream an event for you, I'm not cheap, but I'm the best. So you can contact me via Facebook. My contact details are there. And I'll stream for you a crystal clear in visuals and sound. And I warn you, I'm not cheap. But you get the best. Black 
So if you look into the camera, let me hear your voice. Hello, hello, hello. Hold on. How is that? Does that sound all right? A bit low. A look bit in the low. camera, look in the camera. Okay. So... Can I speak a bit louder? No, 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 that's, no, no, don't worry, I'll control it, yeah? Right, okay. So, good afternoon. Can you tell me your name? Yep, I'm Laura D. Pusey. So, Laura, I've met you last year and, I'm, and I sent you a link to this event Yes, and I was surprised I actually saw you waving at me earlier. Well, if you're looking to the camera, yes. can you explain to Street Mike why it was important for you to be down at the bandstand here celebrating our warrior queen, Sasha Johnson? Absolutely. When I got the message to come down today, I thought, OK, I will make my way down. And then also Sister Emma, who I work with, said that she'd be pouring libation. Earlier on, I was performing a funeral and together we've come down here. The thing is, what we need to remember is that Sasha lives. Sasha is alive. These bodies that we inhabit, these are our vehicles. These are the way that we move from one space to the next, how we communicate with people. 
Sasha's spirit is traveling at the moment, but her spirit can return whenever it's ready. Her spirit works, and whatever's happening with Sasha at the moment, it is a spiritual thing that's happening. She has been taken away so that she can work in other realms, and she will be back. When she returns, it will be in strength, it will be in power, and she will be held up by her community. She will be held up by the ancestors, and she will come, we hope, bearing gifts, bearing information, bearing knowledge and wisdom that will help us to forward, to help us to move against the enemy as we travel forward as a people, as we gain our strength and power. Sasha is an activist and she is a warrior, she is a sister, and we can only ever hope to move in her direction towards liberation, towards freedom. Laura, tell me what it is like for you to be here and hearing the drums, because the reason I ask the question here, I, I, I'm talking here, I'm talking too much, but I'm setting the scene. When I was up at the bandstand, the drums are so powerful, my camera's rocking, so I come down here to stop it rocking. So explain to my viewers what it is like and what it sounds like and feels like to be here. You see, the thing about the drums, and maybe we don't know this, but we are drums. Our bodies are instruments. We respond to the drum. The drum is our heartbeat. This is our communication. This is how our ancestors used to speak to each other. This is how we used to send messages. We may not be aware of the messages that are being sent via the drum at the moment, but that message is being sent to our DNA. We are becoming awakened as a people and we are moving forward again. We do so with the drums. This drum sends a message to all of our enemies. It sends a message to all of those who may doubt us, but they fear us because they know that when we lick drums, it's a different level. Again, as I say, this is spiritual. No weapons can be formed against I and I, against we, if we continue beating our drums and coming together in union. This is what the enemy doesn't want, doesn't want us together, doesn't want us united. Because when we are together, when we are united, our spirit is one and it rises. It rises far above anything that anybody else can ever dream of creating. Why? Because we are the creators. We are the original. We come first and we will always be here. But you know something, Laura? I always talk you as quiet. I never know your chats are sweet. I've got a lot to say. I've got a lot to say. And you will be hearing more from me in the future. Excellent. Thanks a lot. And next time we chat, we can chat in detail about something else you're involved in. Yes. But there's a time and a place. Absolutely. And today's not the time. Today is Sasha's day. It's Sasha's day. Absolutely. Excellent. But thank you very much. Okay. And we're going to catch up later on. Right. I'm just going to interview some... If you call that young lady behind you. Excuse me. Come, come. Come. In the orange? Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, come. This lady. Come. Hey, uh, Excellent. Hi. If you step forward, I want to interview you. But what I'm going to do, if you put the microphone on her for me, please. <coughs> for those who Can know me, will know that. I don't know how to take it off. Hold on, let me do it. I'll do it. Can I put that in the pocket? Yep. That will uh, catch crystal clear oh, sound. Okay. Sound is important. So, can you hear me good? I can hear you. And you next, you next, you next item. So, good afternoon. What good is afternoon. your name? I'm Empress Judah. So, good afternoon. What's your name? Good afternoon, Street Mike. My name is Empress Judah. Uh, uh, so, you know Street Mike? Where you know Street Mike from? I've seen Sasha do some work with you. Hey, big up, big up, big up, big up. So, tell me about this T-shirt you're wearing. There's quite a, a, a bit of a story to the T-shirt in as much as uh, in North London, Tottenham specifically, there was a young black schoolboy, 13 years of age, who was seriously assaulted by police uh, and some quick-thinking school children filmed the incident that went viral. Sasha Johnson, who at the time, Sasha, 
Sasha X, I should say, at the time who hadn't yet moved to London, travelled over from Oxford to join myself and several other activists, I think probably a couple of hundred outside Tottenham Police Station. So this picture was taken um, in respect of the fact that Sasha had generously given freely of her time on a Saturday, travelled in from Oxford to London to show her support for the schoolboy that she didn't know, but that's the kind of person she is. And she is that still that type of person, but let's focus on what the great things that's going on here today. So tell me more about what it feels like for you to be down here today celebrating Warrior Queen. It, it's a combination of mixed emotions, uh, because obviously, Sasha is still unwell and we want to send our love and our energy to Sasha. We want to see Sasha return to her children and to return to us in the community. So it's, it's amazing to be here and I'm thankful to the organizers for doing what is the duty of all of us that respect what Sasha means to us. But it, it is difficult, I have to be, you know, I have to say it's difficult because I, I, I try not to think about Sasha and where she is at the moment too much. Uh, when I do, I tend to concentrate in moments like this, prayers and, and uh, just sending out good energy. But thank you very much. Thank you. And, you know, we're here till nine o'clock tonight. And like you said, and I spent lots of time with Sasha filming her. I've got some footage I've never released. And there's a time and a place. But there's some amazing things Sasha has done and said. And we've known that in the future, people will see that. But thank you very much. And can I just say one yeah, you final can. thing, you can. Uh, Street Mark? Again, no. thank you for being here. Um, Sasha was a political activist, of a course. black youth leader who had uh, strong views about reparations. And uh, she influenced many people, people older than herself. Uh, fortunately, I was able to share with her some of my experiences meeting Mr. Mandela and Mrs. Mandela um, through my writing. So I just want to say I love you, Sister Sasha X. Johnson. You're a diamond and I'm so happy that I told you that's the only thing that gives me some comfort when you were strong with us walking, doing the work and you soon will return. I pray almighty God that the nurses and the doctors will continue to give you the care that you so deserve. I thank you. It is so great the energy that is being sent from the bandstand to Sasha. But do you know something? When I spent time interviewing Sasha, I spent over an hour with her outside of the House of Commons and a lot of time in, and I got, all I can say, when I spoke to Sasha, I've never met someone who's so articulate in my life. And it's amazing how articulate she was and still is. And can I just add to that, that, you know, for a young woman, this is what is so special about Sasha. As you said, she was able to express and articulate the racism that her generation was experiencing and that my generation continues, all of us continue to feel the brunt of institutional racism. What makes Sasha so special is that she has the courage and the determination to stand and face it head on. And she was an inspiration, as I said, to not just her generation, but anyone that met Sasha knew the beauty of her. And we just want her return to us. Excellent. Thank you, Thank you very much, Mum. Let me take back my microphone. Thank Don't you. forget that. Thank you. Let me get my microphone. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Let me ask you about libations and what that is, yeah? Okay. That, that hasn't got a box. Oh, sorry, I forgot. Yeah. Are you good? I am so good. What's your name? Huh? What's your name? Wendell. Wendell. You can call me Street Mike. Come forward. Street, Street Mike. Mike. Okay, Adam. okay, okay, okay. I mean, say I'm a person I like good sound. Okay, fine. So with that good sound, it's no good. So, so we're now we are live on YouTube, Facebook, twice. The world is watching us. So tell me something, yeah. What's your name? 
My name's Amashade Shetnicki. So tell me more. Earlier on, you was up on the bandstand and you were doing smoke and libations. Can you please explain to those who don't know what is libations? Ah, good thanks. Yeah, good question. Very good question. <laughs> Very good question. Okay, people, good thanks. Um, I'd just like to say I, I am a ceremonialist. I deal with ceremony. It's my passion. Um, uh, I have a diploma in funeral ceremony. I also do weddings and naming ceremonies because ceremony is so important for us. And one of the key aspects of ceremony is the blessing which can also be a libation. And with the libation, it's about connecting the elements, it's energetic. So you deal with earth, fire, water and air. But particularly with libation, you have a calabash or a container with water. And that water carries, it's like you speak into the water, you bless the water, the water holds your energy and then you pour it or you spread it or you splash it. And that takes your prayers off to the ancestors. So a libation honours the heads and shoulders that we stand upon. A libation honours our legacy, the heroes and sheroes that inspire us. A libation honours our family ancestors, the ones who really hold us, the backbone of who we be. So today I was really honoured to be invited here to really uplift the family, uplift Sasha, you know, and let, uh, let her and the community and everybody know energetically that we're here, we're strong, we're striving towards liberation. Each step, each breath, in fact, is brings us closer to our own personal liberation, our collective liberation. So, is that is that, that good? That is a great explanation for okay. those who do not know. And it was great to hear. You know, you're involved with, in the funeral industry. Okay. Yes. No. Absolutely. So, so am I. But, okay. But it's, that's not for today. All right. And you know the great thing about being down here is that for me, I was here last year from about the 25th of May. 24, yeah, it would have been the 25th of May. This is when this all started. And yes. it was me and Clive who come here yes. to the bandstand and it's yes. expanded from there. Yes. But to be down here today, yeah. 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 celebrating the warrior queen, for me, yes. it is so great. And it is so great that there are so many people giving their time freely and sending that energy out Have to. For, Have to. for Sasha. But please describe to the yes. people watching, what? describe what it is like to be here, the feeling, the sound, the energy, the vibe. Describe that in words. Right, so I don't know you if like I can that, describe yeah? it, but the teeth, you know. Um, Sasha is in a deep place. She's traveling, she's working hard, she's holding energy in her way. We've come out, the sun is shining, it's a beautiful day, the energy is high, it's very high. And everybody here, we're all movers and shakers, we're all leaders in our own rights. And, and I think for those that couldn't make it, send your energy, send your energy. Don't think that, oh, I missed it. Because it really is about us tuning in. I wasn't here last year physically, but I was here spiritually and I was always supported and always sent my energy. So I think today you can feel that. When you hear the drum fall, you can feel that. When you see the trees and the nature and, and everybody just tuning in, there's people that are just stopped what they were doing and where they were going, and they're just taking in the vibration. Yeah? And that vibration doesn't stop here. It reverberates. 
throughout the planet. Excellent, my dear. Thank you very much. Uh, and I'm going to catch up with you again. Yes, and we can, I do a lot of live streaming of funerals. Sometimes okay. I would live stream five a week. Oh, wow. And it pays okay. for all of this. So yeah, good, thanks. good, good. And you know Laura? Yes, well, we work together. I'm on a steering committee. Yeah, so I'm Say part no of Fat Folk. I'm, yeah, so... Small world. Yeah, you know that. <laughs> if much I take love. my microphone, much we can, love. We can okay. chat yes. later on. And I'm now going to chat to another warrior standing next to me. Thank you very much, and we'll catch up soon. Thank you. Come next to street mic, sir. Put the microphone on. You know the importance of having crystal clear sound. Absolutely. And for those of you who are watching, my name is Wendell Daniel from Street Mike. And if put the ting in your trousers, man. Right, and if it. you like what you're seeing, give me the thumbs up. Make your comments down below, share and follow. Because this is what we do best. We don't just go out and film. I engage with people, and I'm now going to engage with this man. Step forward. What's your name, sir? Uh, Brother Cool Grant, Campaign for Truth and Justice. And here's one of my community daughters. So tell me, sir, let's focus. There comes on... another one, sorry. Hey, hey. <laughs> sorry, sorry. So let's oh, focus. Uh, <laughs> sorry, all right, sir. Uh, all right, all right. Daddy's getting a hug. All right. So, all right. so sir. Let's focus on the drum salute today. Absolutely. And, you know, let's stay there. Yeah. What is it like for you to be down here on such a momentous historical event? Well, for me, it's an honour. It's a sad, but nonetheless an honour and privilege to be here standing in support, sending Oh, joining together with everyone here to send healing vibrations to our beautiful warrior queen, Sastra Johnson. We were here last year and we're here again. We've been coming here for a number of um, months after her shooting and um, today being the, the 12th anniversary, the anniversary of, the of her. Yeah, we had to be here and it's great to see the community turn out and the drummers oh wow it's just just amazing and to not be here would be yeah, yeah. but what I, want, what I want you to do is to describe the feeling of being here amongst the drums describe to people what's going through your body and how it feels well this is abs i've just come off the stage there where i was literally dancing and I think, especially in this type of atmosphere, it is impossible not to be moved by the drums. So it's completely and totally uplifting. And this is why, this is what it's all about, because we are trying to send exactly these vibrations to our sister Sasha. And you know something, I fully concur with everything you're saying about the dancing, because when my camera was up there on the bandstand, my camera was rocking, bouncing, man. Absolutely. It was bouncing up and down. Absolutely. So I had to come down here for stability. Absolutely. I'll be going back up there in a minute, yeah. sir. Yes. But sir, keep up all of the great work. And next time we talk, I can interview you more about the great work you're doing for your campaign. But Their today, pleasure. it's about Sasha. Absolutely, absolutely. Look Thanks. forward to it. Thanks a lot, sir. Right, Russell. Yeah. See, sound is important, mate. Yeah, Too um, many people neglect sound. Yes, yes. So, the drummers have now decided to take a break, which is great because what I can now do, I can catch up on some interviews. So, let's do some interviews. Auntie, come, let's do an interview.
Yes, sir. In certain parts of West, West Africa, beloved, when, you, when we hear Ago, no matter how much pretty, how much noise is being made, when you hear Ago, everybody go quiet, the response is Ami. Ami. Ago means clear the way, or Ago means open your ears, open your eyes. Something special is about to happen. All right, so we don't think, once we hear our goal, we don't think individually, we think collectively. It's time for collective focus. It's time for collective order. Are you all with me? So I say our goal, you say our me. That means we are at attention, we are focusing. We are on the ball, we are, we are awake to our culture. We are answering answering to the dictates of our culture. So when I say Ago, you say Ami. Ago. 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 All right. And when I say Sankofa, you say Bibi Woho. Let me explain that. Sankofa means go back and fetch. Go back and fetch it. Bibi Woho means there's something of value there. Are you all with me, brothers and sisters? We claim all of it. Bibi Woho. So I say, Sankofa, you say, Bibi Woho. Sankofa, 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 Tenangware. Royal elders, queens and kings, princesses and princes of Great Mama Africa. Now we've given total focus, remember. We're not thinking individually now, we're thinking collectively. We're in the circle. Let the circle be unbroken and let the healing begin. Let the circle be unbroken and let the healing begin. It means that we are all focused in a oneness in the circle. It means that there are no fractures in the circle. You know how a circuit runs, brothers and sisters. If there's a fracture in the circuit, the circuit will happen. It can't run. Are you, are you, you agree with me, brothers and sisters? So we need 100% focus now. 100% focus. Because we're about to pour libation as we contemplate on the life and the healing powers that we all bring to this space. We are concentrating and focusing on the life and the healing powers of our sister whose spirit whose needs have brought us to this space. We're not thinking about our individual selves now. We're thinking about the collective. We're not thinking about our individual selves now. We are thinking about our dear, beloved sister who needs our united strength and power in this moment. Am I right, brothers and sisters? So the only talking that's going to go on right now is the drum and the word that comes off the drum. And I have been given the honor of being the one in this moment to bring the word off the drum. The word comes off the drum because the drum represents the rhythm of time. It represents nature itself, the life force, the life energy. 
It represents the heartbeat of the nation. It is the drum that calls us together, beloved brothers and sisters. And it is the drum that announces the ceremonial moment. The drum is therefore sacred. So let us all reverence the drum as we gather in this space. Beloved brothers and sisters, in a oneness of heart, a oneness of mind, a oneness of strength, a oneness of focus, let us bring to the center of our focus, let us bring our focus to the center of this room where is erected our shrine. The shrine, the shrine, the shrine, the center of our focus. The shrine, the shrine, the shrine, the center of our worship. Symbolizing the creator, the creation, the sun, the moon, the stars, the planets, the elements, motto, fire, mvuro, water, ifu, earth, and mepo, air. Symbolizing the life force. We say, Ashe. 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 For Ashe is the life force. When we say Ashe, we evoke the life force. The healing powers of nature. The healing spirit of Mutumukuru, our great ancestors, are evoked when we utter the word Ashe. Tenaimare, 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 Marukurukuru, 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 Zai Mutumukuru, Zai Mutumukuru. Zai Mazimokro, Ten I Mare, Ten I Mare, Ten I Mare. For the word of Regai Mas, we and in no Taura, Nepunwa, the Muyo Mango, the sequin and Mimare. May the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Jah of our creation. Ten I Mare. Mwari kumbore rai Afrika Ngai simuzire fitarayo Nzwa yi mitero yedu Isumuri ayo itumuri ako Uya mwaya, uya mwaya kumbore re Uya mwaya, uya mwaya muzbene Isumuri ayo itumuri ako Tenai mwari Tenai mwari Tenai mwari Mwari Ja, God bless Africa. Lift up the name of Africa on high. Hear our humble prayers, O oh Mwari, O oh Ja. We, the family of Africa, we, this family of Africa, come, great spirit, come, come and bless us. Come, great spirit, come, come and be with us. We, the family of Africa, we, this family of Africa, Tenai Mwari, Tenai Mwari, Tenai Mwari. Simba, Eco Grand Caipa, Mari to Pio Massimba, Eco Grand Caipa, Mari to Pio Massimba, Eco Grand Caipa, Ten I Mari, Ten I Mari, Ten I Mari, Father Heaven, Mother Earth, Zimumukuru, Great Ancestors, Moya Yakachata, Gaibe Matire, Moya Yakachata, Gaibe Matire, Moya Yakachata, Gaibe Matire, Tenai Mare, Tenai Mare, Tenai Mare. 
Moya yakachata Moya yakachata Ngaibe matire Moya yakachata Ngaibe matire Tenai mwari Tenai mwari Tenai mwari Yeah 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 By the power of our ritual by the power of the word by the sound of the drum, we command that all that is of evil, leave us, leave us, leave us, evil spirit, leave us, leave us, leave us, leave us, leave us. Yeah, 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 We command this in the name and by the power of all things great and good, knowing that the power of good is greater than the power of evil. Yeah, the power of good is greater than the power of evil. But more that God is not celebrated until the voice of the righteous is heard. Let the voice of the righteous be heard. Let the voice of the righteous be heard. Let the voice of the righteous be heard. Yeah, 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 Father Heaven, Mother Earth, Mutimu Mukuru, Great Ancestors. Unto Mutimu Mukuru, the Great Ancestors, we come. Unto Mutimu Mukuru, the Great Ancestors, we come. We call upon Mutimu Mukuru, the Great Ancestors. In the tongue of Mutimu Mukuru, the Great Ancestors. We call upon Mutimu Mukuru, the Great Ancestors. In the tongue of Mutimu Mukuru, the Great Ancestors. Mutimu Mukuru, yeah, Kebulan, Uyai. Uyai, Uyai, Zumukuro, brothers and sisters, say Uyai. When I say Zumukuro, yeah, as cable and great ancestors of Mama Africa, you say Uyai, which means come. Uyai, Uyai, Zumukuro, yeah, as cable and Uyai, Uyai, Zumukuro, yeah, as cable and Uyai, Zumukuro, yeah, as cable and. Call you from the east, call you from the west, call you from the north, call you from the south, from around the circumferences of the globe, from the height of Mount Kilimanjaro and all the mountains of Mama Africa to the depth of the river Nile and all the waters of Mama Africa. We are we call, we call, we call you. We are we call, we call, we call you. We are come, come, come. Come, 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 come. We call you from the shores of Mama Africa, Asia, Europe, North and South America, the Caribbean, the Isles of the Pacific. We are you, 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 we are you. We call you from the Atlantic Ocean, from the Pacific Ocean, the Red Sea. We call you, we call you from the Sahara Desert. Uyai, 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 uyai. Hear them, hear them, hear them. We evoke the spirit of Mutumu Mukuru, our great ancestors, in this moment and in this space. Let us call upon the names of some great ancestors. First of all, let's call upon the ancient one, those who gave knowledge to the world, those who gave culture 
and civilization to the world. Those who give mathematics, science, technology, philosophy, theology, astrology, astronomy to the world. We say, Uyayi! Uyayi! Can't hear you, Uyayi! Call upon our ancestors. All our ancestors. The warriors of our history. Great warriors who shed their blood in the cause of our liberation. Those who lived their lives and gave their lives so we could have a better life. Dare we forget them? We call upon the Zulu warriors, Uyai. The Fosa warriors. Trona warriors. Ndebele warriors. We call upon the Masai warriors. Herero warriors. Nama warriors, Lingala warriors, the Kikuyu warriors, Tigre warriors, Oromo warriors, Amhara warriors, Ashanti warriors, Kante warriors, Ga warriors, the Yoruba warriors, Ibo warriors, Ijau warriors, Uyai, Uyai. Hear them! Rastafari warriors! Black Panther warriors! Black Power warriors! UNIA warriors! We call, we call, we call upon civil rights warriors! Nation of Islam warriors! Uyayi! 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 Hear them! of our history, great warrior queens of our history, those powerful African queens, Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Which one? Shout them out, brothers and sisters. Yes, yeah, Santewa. Mbuya yeah, yeah. Nehanda. Yeah, yeah. Queen Makeda. Yeah, yeah. Queen Chan Kaina. Yeah, yeah. Empress Menem. Yeah, yeah. Willie Mandela. Claudia Jones, we are here. Rosa Parks, we are here. Let us call upon the names of some great African warrior kings. Let me hear the names, brothers and sisters. The most eminent prophet and king is Excellency Marcos Mazaya Gabe. We are here. The eminent prophet and king, Papa Homo Wale Malcolm X. the 
mind and the body of our sister whose spirit has called us in this space gather in this moment our sister who lie ailing because of the wicked and evil deeds of a misguided spirit a sister who stood firm in our community defending what was true and just and right demanding justice a sister who was blazing the trail for justice truth and righteousness a sister who committed no crime but to love her people, to love justice and to hate injustice, to hate oppression. A sister who was bold enough and brave enough to be seen and to be heard, chanting down the evils of Babylon. Because of her deeds of righteousness. Her spirit calls us in this space. To summon our collective healing powers. And we do have healing powers beloved brothers and sisters. For we are gods and goddesses. Did you hear me? We are gods and goddesses. We come from the source of the divine. What else can a god and a goddess create but a god and a goddess? And so we have within us powers of healing. Through our unity, let us evoke the spirit of the all of the prophets of healing that have walked through this dispensation of time. From Imhotep to Baba Sally, Baba Laila or Africa, prophets of healing, let us summon their spirit and their wisdom of the healing arts, the healing sciences, so that we will imbibe their wisdom. Those among us who are leading in the prophecy of healing will find a way, will find the healing balm for our sister's recovery, our sister's resurrection to full optimum health. That's what we're calling for. That's what we're putting out there in the ether, brothers and sisters. And the rest is left to the ancestors. The rest is left to the supreme creator of the universe who dwells within us. So beloved, let us join our hearts and our voices as we chant together the Ashe. We're going to chant Ashe. I will lead you follow. We do Ashe, we do it two times, the third time. We're gonna, we're gonna stretch out the Ashe. Ashe, oh. And we're gonna do three sets of three. As I said earlier on, Ashe is the life force. The life force that creates life, that sustains life. Restores life. Let us chant the Ashe. Ah. Uh. 
Deep 
and beyond and when we say those words what we mean is that we intend to take control of every degree of the cycle of African life are you with me brothers and sisters yes. and so we're going to have to depart because we're due to be on galaxy radio duty calls for seven o'clock that's the worst brothers and sisters so we do apologize but the work continues. You know we remain here in spirit. So keep the vibration going. Keep the circle unbroken. We are a powerful, awesome people.
opening the African spirit, the African soul to the forces of nature. The forces of nature that imbibe us with the special character that we have as a people, the first people of the first land, Mama Africa. So brothers and sisters, continue the vibration. You're powerful. You're awesome. You're powerful. You're awesome. salute for the tribute for the honor of our sister Sasha and at this time we want to hear from one of our beloved sisters who will take us further into our program paying tribute and honor respect and love to our beloved sister 
And so without further ado, brothers and sisters, please make some righteous noise and welcome our sister. Ocean. Ocean from Royal Netta. Please make some righteous noise for our sister. Ocean from Royal Netta. A brave sister, warrior queen. And in her words, we the people have the power. Power, people, the people have the power. Power to the people. People have the power. Power to the people. People. Power.
Sasha Johnson. Sasha Johnson. She loved, loved black people. She didn't hate no one. She loved herself and her our people. Sasha Johnson. Yamasa matatu anamasa 
stand in Rushkin Park and this is Denmark Hill and this is the awakening a spiritual revival event for Sasha Johnson and it is one year on we salute our warrior queen Sasha Johnson we are still burning a fire taking a stand the bandstand here in Ruskin Square, Ruskin Park, I beg your pardon. And today, it is a year since that terrible event in Peckham, Concert Road, Peckham, where Sasha Johnson was shot and she still remains seriously ill in hospital and it's a year since the incident occurred and this is a salute to our warrior queen Sasha Johnson and it began here at 4pm and we've had many speakers, we've had Brother Leo Mohammed and many others and we are soon going to be getting an update about Sasha and that will be from her personal assistant Andy Morris so Andy Morris Street Mike is going to be interviewing him and then we will be able to get an update but I believe he's going to tell you more about another event also that's going to be happening on Saturday in Oxford so there's another event taking on taking place in Oxford on Saturday and don't forget if you like street like give it a thumbs up make your comments down below share and follow so share street Mike follow street Mike we're currently on YouTube at street Mike live stream we're on Facebook at Street Mike live stream and we're on Facebook at Street Mike Podcast. We're going to be live, live, live and direct until 9pm. So we're going to be live streaming. We started at 4pm. We're going to be here until 9pm. A salute, a drum salute for Warrior Queen Sasha Johnson. And for those of you on the YouTube chat, it is my intention to interview Brother Leo Mohammed, and I know you would like to ask him some questions. So when the time is right, it might not be right because there's so much going on, but it's my intention to interview Brother Leo Mohammed. And those of you in the chat can ask questions, but as normal, be respectful. It's about creating relationships. If you ask a disrespectful question, I won't even bother to look at it. So be respectful. But if it's going to happen, I'll let you know. And, but there's a lot going on here. So it looks like Leo's going to be chatting now. So let's wait and see. But I've had my apologies from Mavina Newton. And Mavina is a... Come on, family. Hold on, let's go. Make your righteous noise and give it up for Ocean from Royal Nata. Yes, yes, yes. 
Sasha means. The name Sasha comes from a Russian root. It's the root of Alexander. It's a neutral name. It can be either male or female. It means the savior of mankind. Sasha. It means a defender of humanity. That's what her name means. We pay tribute, brothers and sisters, to Sister Sasha. I don't like to use the name Johnson. Johnson comes from our former slave master and his children. Sasha is the name that would have been given by her mother or father, her first name. Johnson is a compound of John and his son, who were slave masters. Jones, Robinson, Green, Brown are all the names the savior of mankind, a warrior queen, our sister, dear brothers and sisters, we're here today to play the drums, to send the vibration and the energy of our collective will to reach the heart and the mind and the soul and the spirit of our dear beloved sister. We are believers in the creative, redemptive power. We know that our presence here today is divine. We know that our sister Despite the harshness of the injury that she suffered one year ago today, we know that our beloved sister can recover. That is why we stand here today in the belief, willing the Creator, asking the Creator, begging the Creator, if it's His will to rise her up again awaken our sister. Brothers and sisters, we must appreciate that Sasha Johnson was raised up in this day and time to be a lesson to all of us. As a young sister, less than 30 years old, she was bold and courageous. She embraced the idea and the concept of Black Lives Matter. Embrace the idea and the concept of the taking the initiative political party. She embraced the idea and the concept of the Black Panthers. I am a member of the Nation of Islam following the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad as taught and exemplified by the honorable 
Minister Louis Farrakhan. But Sasha reached out to me as an elder in the black community. And she asked me, Brother Leo, would you be a mentor to me? In other words, she embraced the nation of Islam. The principle of Sasha was that she didn't pick a group within the black community and say, I belong to that group exclusively. She embraced them all. Her life is a lesson to us all. We cannot today be tribes and separate groups. We have to embrace all of us as one united original family. Black family. African family. Indigenous family. That's who we are. Sasha Johnson. I've got to get out of the habit of saying that last name. Our sister Sasha spoke into the reality of our oppression. She spoke into the idea that we should be a free people having self-determination and being able to determine our own futures. Whether we appreciate it or not, dear family. She made a lot of people very nervous. She made some in the black community who should know better she made them envious and jealous. Because as a young sister, she could articulate the pain and hurt of her people better than some of us who have been in this for countless years. She should have been protected. to get 
get up and to emulate our sister and to do what they saw her doing. But we have a duty, brothers and sisters. Too many of us are just cheerleaders, cheering on the brave one who is willing to stand up and represent us, but we don't understand that whenever one of us stands up, we need protection. We should be protected. Sasha should have been protected. See, I have some of my brothers with me. Sasha. 
Christian's life is given to us to bring us together as one family, brothers and sisters, Christians, Muslims, Hebrews, Rasta, al Kabulan. Sister Sasha, one of our young queens, warrior queens. And at the same time, we honor and respect our elders. And we must bridge that generation gap, dear family. There should be more young people here. Can I get a witness? There should be more young people here. Can I get a witness? Brothers and sisters, we have to capture the imagination, the hearts and minds of our children. We have to bring them back into the fold. We cannot leave them to be miseducated by our enemies. We pay tribute to our elder, Elder Beckford. Four boys, three girls. Yes, sir. Seven of them. Brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters. Let us honor our elders. Let us let me close my words, my remarks. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you. I just wanted to ask a pay tribute to you. Let me let me close. Let, let me close my remarks, dear family, by saying this to us. The female, the black woman, is very...
very unfortunate that many of us do not know her value and her worth. We talk all day long about this great man and that great man, but brothers and sisters, we should appreciate that there is no great man that did not come from the womb of the woman. The woman, the black woman, she is the mother of civilization. No people could exist on this planet unless they came via her womb. She, brothers and sisters, and in particular, I'm talking to the black men, we must stop forsaking our woman and turning to every other woman on the planet and forsaking the black woman. The black woman must be raised up. Did you know that in the nation of Islam, that we are taught that if there was no God for us to worship, we would have to worship her. That is the importance of the female. She is not the woman of man. She is the woman of God. She is the woman of the creator. She is in fact the co-creator with God. She is his first creation. Brothers and sisters, it is not an accident that we never refer to the earth from which we all come up out of. We never refer to the earth in masculine terms. We always say, Mother Earth. The universe on the which we all dwell is never referred to in masculine terms. We refer to the universe as she. And she gives birth to the nine planets and to the sun, the moon, and the stars. She is the one who nurtures the child from the womb. She is the one who, when you teach her, you teach an entire nation. When you teach a man, you teach an individual. When you teach a woman, when a woman has knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, the nation is great. Did you know that the nation is never judged by the condition of the man? All great nations are judged by the condition of the female. And brothers, when we leave our women out of doors and don't care about their well-being and their upkeep and their well their well-being, we are in denial of our future. Brothers, if we put the woman down, we put ourselves down. I want you to listen to the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Listen to what he has to say about the black woman. He says, there is no such thing as a no good woman. He says, wherever you find a no good woman, she was made no good by a no good man. I want you to hear me. I want you to hear me. The woman has been blamed for many of the ills on the planet. Did you know that only a woman can be violated?
as a man that which you did not want to do in the first place. We must stop blaming the woman. We must honor and respect our females. Brothers and sisters, if we want to, we can say these words and make ourselves sound
open the door of the car for your women. Brothers, open the door of the car for your women. Brothers, open the door of the house, the apartment, the flat for your woman. Brothers, carry the shopping for your woman. Brothers, do the repairs around the house for your woman. Brothers, fix up that broken down garden for your woman. Brothers, offer to your woman a flower.
you will hear the stories of what we did in her absence in honor of her. And she will know that she is loved. And we will love her forever. And we will never forget our session. And every year on the 23rd, we declare Sasha's Day. Regardless of what happens, thank you, brothers and sisters. Thank you for allowing me these few words. I pray that we will maintain this energy, this spirit, and I pray that we will come together this year, 2022, and that by this time next year, we will have raised up a mighty army of black men and black women. We need soldiers, not cheerleaders. We need warriors who are willing to discipline themselves so that when the war escalates, we are not making people afraid and running into walls. But we are a people with our own agenda with our own program, with our own self-determination and our own survival. Thank you, dear beloved brothers and sisters. May the Creator honor our words. May the Creator make our words true. May He bless our sister to awaken from her slumber. May he bless each of us to remain one united family in love with each other. Love one another! There is no people like us. Love one another! Don't hate your brother. Don't hate your sister. Love the most powerful force in the universe. There is nothing that can equal black love. Believe me, nothing can equal black love. Thank you, dear family. As I greet you, as I thank you, Assalamu alaikum. Peace be unto you.
Every sound of the beat is the African drum.
the heart. coach, instructor. I work with the energy force. That chi force. That breath. So 
what I want us to get into our bodies. I want everyone, all of you, once and once you can come forward. Hey, hey, we need the energy force. We need all of us here with one mind, one energy, one direction, penetrating that so we can connect. We need to connect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you, once and ones that are not doing the drums, and even for ones and ones that are doing the drums, we can have a few drums going. But would you like to come forward? Yeah. If you'd like to come forward, all ones and ones. Because what I want us to do is to try to unify, unify a strength. Ah, whoosh! We hold our internal energy here, Dantian, right here. And what we are doing, we are doing a lot of discharging energy. When we should be recharging. Yes, we discharge, but there is a balance. There's a balance within the intake of breath and the outgoing of breath. So I'd like you to come, come and take, come in, come in, come in. Feel free to come in. And let us engage in some movement. Let us engage in some movement. Yeah, just take a space. Anybody else from outside? Because they're not, they're not, not there. Come, come. Come forward, my sister. Come forward. Come forward. Like, stand up. Come forward. Right. So we have this temple that we're living in. Some people call it a body. I call it a temple. Yeah? Because if I am not a lot, if I'm not able to align all the meridians in my body, to align all my organs, all my chi energy in this body. I am unbalanced. So my healing has to take place first deep, deep, deep within. What can heal? What heals?
Okay. Feel that chi. Put that. Put your hands to your heart. And give the love of this heart. Send the love of this heart forward to Sasha. With your intention, feel your power connecting with Sasha. Good evening all. I've now come off the bandstand because the drums are beginning to rock the camera too much. So I've now come down to the bottom here again and hopefully I'm going to capture a few interviews and hopefully 
I'm going to see if Brother Leo Mohammed is willing to engage with some of you on the chat. So let's ask him the question first. So I've just had a chat with brother Leo Mohammed, and I know there are people in the chat. I'm now going to go there. So if you would like to ask brother Leo Mohammed a question, this is your opportunity to ask questions of brother Leo Mohammed. And what I do say, please be respectful in asking your questions it's about forming relationships so if you want to disrespectful be if you want to be disrespectful it ain't happening show some respect and so if you want to ask brother leo mohammed a question i'm now going into the chat So, let's see the live chat, what's there. So, let's get ready for those of you who would like to ask Brother Leo Mohammed a question. There's Brother Leo Mohammed there, and he has said he is willing to ask, answer your questions. And someone earlier on, I've seen a comment, this has been advertised all over South London, yet hardly anybody turned up. That's actually incorrect. In 2022, what people do, they go online. People don't turn up to events as much as what they used to. They do things online now. So for any armchair warriors making comments like that this is 2022 and people now are doing things online and i see a question about defunding the police and i will ask that question, but first I've got to make sure, Brother Leo Mohammed, this is your opportunity to ask Brother Leo Mohammed from the Nation of Islam a question. Why don't you also ask him when, a, when is the nation going back to Speaker's Corner? Because I haven't seen them there for a long time. So I'm now going to swap the microphone over so, so I can speak directly with brother Leo Mohammed. I'm just going to see if it's working. Take. So I now know my microphone on brother Leo Mohammed is working. So my name is Wendell Daniel. Don't forget to follow. Follow me on Street Mike live stream. Follow me on YouTube and follow me on Facebook. So let's ask Leo Mohammed. just chatting to someone. Some people, I'm actually looking at some of the comments on the chat and I'm actually smiling because some people expect miracles. People watch when they're ready. People can come back at another time and watch. People come on and go. Just like it says, people... Just because you ain't got a million people watching, it doesn't mean nothing. People will watch when they want to watch. 
If you don't want to watch making silly comments, go elsewhere if you're not interested. But let's engage. Let's be constructive. And let's... Let me see if I can interview a man by the name of Spencer who was involved with the Million People March. So let me try and ask Spencer first. Spencer, I'm currently live streaming. So if you go in front, I'm live streaming. Can I interview you? So the first person I'm going to... So I'm now going to ask Mr. Spencer. Some of you might, might remember him. So Spencer, hold on. Hold on. I'm live at the, I've been live since four o'clock, mate. So I'm, I've got a, Spencer. It's because my microphone's on Brother Leo here. Yeah. So Spencer, where have you been for so long, sir? I've been recuperating. I've been recuperating. So how great is it for you to be out here today at Ruskin Park with a drum salute for Sasha Johnson? Do you know something? Um, the morning... I found out Sunday morning, the morning after the show. The first group of people I spoke to, I said to them, if there is one person, male or female, that I know can survive a bullet to the head, it will be Sasha. And what today feels for me, what today means to me, is that my first instinct in the first few hours was correct, because Sasha's still alive. That's what that means to me. And I predicted it. Not a lot of people will survive a bullet to the head. Sasha has. She's recovering, she's getting better, I hear. Um, but yeah, she survived it. And I knew she would. That is so this means to me. That is so great to hear that. And and this has been a very interesting day for me. And the great thing is that we are recording an event, a historical event, and all the footage in the future is going to be very important. Sometimes people may see there's only 50 people here or so, but that's not 50, 60, but that's not, but that's not the issue. Yeah, of course, it's been... I've only turned up in the last, uh, like, 45 minutes or so. I've only turned up in the last 45 minutes or so. Yeah. so. Hey, if you put that on your Spencer, and then what, I, what I'll do... Yeah, hold on. What, you don't know how to put a microphone on? <laughs> I've got to switch this over. I've got to switch this over as well. So I'm now micing up Spencer. So let me hear you, sir. Hello, hi. Brilliant. That, that, that is a lot better. Just like you say, you were working, you come down here, you come down here now. But the, the brilliant thing is that we have that record for of the people, whole thing. Of the whole thing for, pe for people to see. And in the moment, I'm going to interview Brother Leo Mohammed. But tell me more. You said you said you've been not been around, but now you're here. But the Million People March, is there something you're planning in the future or are you waiting until there's other news here? What, what, what's the delay? There is no delay. Um, personally, it feels not right to do it about Sasha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think we had that conversation once as well outside yeah, yeah. of the courtroom. Yeah. Um, it feels like going to war without your, your, your general uh, with you. Um, I mean, it, it, it is down to, I guess, I guess something might trigger it off and we might come back at it. But at the minute, we're watching things. For me, I'm observing what's going on in government with, with Boris Johnson, with, with the American situation, with the world situation regarding that whole issue. Um, nothing's changed, but some things have changed. Um, people are getting called a lot more. So things changed slightly, but the laws that we seek at the time have not been put in place. So of course there is still a fight to be had. All right then, but I won't delay you too much. I know you're I young, see my beautiful you're, wife's you're over beautiful there. young lady's there. She's missing you. And, and I'm is, missing her too. <laughs> and, it is, and it is great to see you. And next time I see you, I want you to tell me about your son because the last discussion we had, you were saying, I remember you was doing some filming at the doctor's surgery and your oh, son... Oh, when I, when I, um, when I got... The when I, yeah, when I had the jabs. So I had my two jabs. 
I'm not an anti vaxxer as you know. So I had my two jabs and um, yeah. That was the that was the last time I think we spoke, yeah, that's right. Yeah. But you know something? If you had come half an hour earlier, you could have had that debate you've always wanted. And do you remember you with said who? who did you say you wanted to the, to have a debate with and you cussed me because I didn't arrange it? Can you remember the name? Oh uh, what's his name, um Huh? Pierce. Yeah, Pierce well, Pierce um he was here. Oh, was he? he was well, I'm glad he turned up for Sasha because, I mean, no. you guys supported him, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm no. glad he turned up for and Sasha. I sent him stuff. He was yeah. here for about an hour or so. Okay, okay. And, and then, and well, then he well, went... Well, I like that. I like that he came for her. I like yeah. that because you guys supported a lot of what he was fighting for at the time. Of course, um, of course. Well, not you lot, as in yeah. you're the press, but she did. So I'm glad he did. I'm glad he did. I'm glad, and I hope he sees it, and I, and I will say to him, I would love to debate him on the vaccination issue because I think he's full of... You know what I think is full of? Point taken. Yeah, so we won't say that on camera. But yeah, I, 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 I wish I'd met him today. I wish I'd met him today. I'd have to meet with him on camera. Yeah. No, no, you would have done that on camera. Because today's about Saturday. Of course, Nothing of course, else. of course. But, but I do look forward to... Thank you very much for the time. And um, I hope everyone's um, enjoyed it. We're probably going to push off in a minute as well. Because yeah, yeah. got work again tomorrow. But... Me too. Hope to see you soon. Yeah, Take care. Stuff. So Good man, one. Good wait, job. Here's a teeth, man. Good job. Teeth <laughs> in my microphone. <laughs>
Brother Leo, how would you describe how today has been? Uh, it's been a very, very um, beautiful day, brother. It's been very powerful. Um, it's been very spiritual. Our people's energy is just off the chain in reality. Um, it's been celebration. It's not been any type of uh, spirit which is down. It's been a very uplifting time, and our people have spent the day really paying tribute and saluting Sister Sasha. Do you know something? You know, I'm really proud to be down here today, and many people have come over over the hours. And like you said to me this morning, we've got this record that is so, the record we're creating here today, it is so important. And I'm, you know, I'm grateful for that. But what I'm going to do now, I'm going to engage with a few people online. But before I do, I've got to ask you a question about Speaker's Corner. And last time we had a discussion, you mentioned that it is your intention to go back to Speaker's Corner. So, and you also mentioned a metaphor which I liked about the weeds growing. And when do you intend to go back to Speaker's Corner? Well, normally what we do, brother, is that we will go to Hyde Park Speaker's Corner at a minimum four times or six times a year. And so we may be doing that again this year, inshallah, God willing, probably around the month of July or August is when we would uh, return to the park. What happens in the park is that um, the tradition of the park is that, you know, people come and they, they make a lot of noise and you, you have all manner of different speakers down there. And the people tend to be very, very indisciplined and they like the idea of heckling and shouting at one another. And that, that's what we meant when we said about the weeds growing up because, you know, it's very wild. It's like it becomes like a jungle. But when we come to Hyde Park, by the grace and mercy of God, the members of the Nation of Islam, we really like to maintain discipline. We like to be disciplined ourselves and we like to encourage those who come to listen and those who come to ask questions and make points to really be patient and to listen until we have concluded what we have to say. Then we open up ourselves to questions because we're speaking in the public, therefore we have to answer questions in the public. So, inshallah, God willing, we will be coming back uh, around July, August, and uh, hopefully we will do, as I said, uh, between four and six weeks uh, down there, dealing with specific subject matters to deal with the contemporary realities of what's happening in the world today, and of course, bringing the scriptures from the Holy Quran and the Bible to the fore to make sense of you know what's happening today that people understand that these books are not books of history, but these books are actually books of prophecy dealing with the contemporary reality which is unfolding in the world today. Excellent. What I'm now going to do, I'm going to ask some questions that are online. And what I have done is ask the people in the chat just to um, send some questions in, but be respectful. And the first question is from... Oldham the Bowl, he's a regular and I know he's at, always at, watching when I do Speaker's Corner as well. And this is what he says, yeah. Sorry, white lines, I beg your pardon. He said, ask him what he thinks of defunding the police, getting rid of the family unit and Marxist ther theory. So what do you think of defunding the police? Well... I mean, you know, it's a, it's a sentiment that's been expressed. It's an idea that many people have uh, alluded to. But in reality, you know, I, I don't really believe that that's necessarily such a good idea to defund uh, law enforcement. I think in the end, uh, when you have a society, a civilized society, you need law enforcement. You need to make sure that there are rules and regulations that govern the society and that the people should be obedient to those laws. What I, what, what I would be against is the law enforcement that's corrupt and wicked and is oppressive to the people. Those types of 
so-called law enforcement need to be kicked out, not necessarily defund police in the sense that police haven't got the funds to be able to perform their duties. What you have to have is a situation where those corrupt officers are rooted out of the force, where the force itself is looked at as a whole and it's reformed. So that's what I would suggest. I don't believe that we'll just defund the police. I mean, what would you put in its place? You need to have something there that would allow the people to be able to live in peace and harmony and that people know that there is some type of uh, service, some type of force that's there to maintain law and order, to maintain peace. And so I don't believe that wholesale uh, law enforcement should be defunded. What I believe is that the whole uh, system of law enforcement needs to be looked upon, uh, examined to see where those racist elements are, where, and, and, and I, it's not just one or two bad apples floating around in the police. We know that all of that energy of racism comes from the very top. So it's that element that needs to be reformed and then law enforcement needs to be reminded that first and foremost they are there to serve the community, not oppress the community or beat down the community, but we are supposed to be there to be of service to the members of the human family. And if that could be achieved, if you could get a force, if you could get a service like that, then I think that such a service deserves to be in existence. So I don't necessarily ascribe to the idea of defunding police. Andrew Hart has asked, ask why you speak of raising African warriors on the street of my country at an event where black boys nearly killed a black girl. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what the person is talking about, to be honest with you. But what I would say is this. You know, every man on this planet has his military. Every man, the Chinese, the Japanese, the Asians, the white man, everybody has their military. The only people who are frowned upon when it comes to the idea of us having our own military, having our own um, strong warriors, is the black man. And so we don't make any apology, brother, about wanting to have our own powerful men stand up in this society, in America, in the Caribbean, on the continent of Africa, wherever we are. We have the right of self-determination. We have the right to have our warriors and our soldiers, just like all of the other men on planet Earth. And that's what we intend to do. We intend to build armies wherever we are. Armies of righteousness, armies of uprightness, armies of protection for our women and our children, first and foremost, and armies who are prepared to build on behalf of the black community. What I will, what I will do is correct something which the gentleman has said. As you know, yeah, I attended the Old Bailey, so I know the facts of the case. The case was thrown out due to lack of evidence, and the police are now carrying out further investigation. There was never any evidence that black boys or any person of any form shot Sasser, because what we do know is that X amount of people were arrested, they were arraigned, they, they were put on remand, and a case collapsed. And what we must always remember is that a person is innocent until proven guilty. So I, the question is actually factually in, incorrect. I'm going to ask another question. Let, let, me, let, me just, let me just say something about that, though, brother, because, you see, according to my understanding, I, I don't know a great deal about that case, but according to my understanding, what was reported on the news was that the case collapsed and that there were certain elements about the case which were to be kept secret, and they could not talk about why the case had collapsed. There was some intrigue where the police and the accused was concerned. Now, historically, when that type of thing happens, as with, if you remember, when Malcolm X was assassinated, 
They said that they arrested two men on the spot. But the next day, one of those men disappeared from the news. And you never heard nothing about him again. Why? Because it turns out that that individual was actually working for the, um, the enemy, the, the, working for the FBI, working for the American government, and was complicit in the assassination. So my uh, problem with this narrative of this thing all of a sudden collapsing because of some secret in-camera uh, evidence that couldn't be, re be revealed to the public, oftentimes when that type of thing happens, it's because there was some type of undercover operative working possibly on behalf of either the MI5 or MI6 or the police or the uh, no, special, bra special branch or any of those elements who may have been involved in this crime against Sasha Johnson and they can't afford for that reality to come out in open court, hence the collapse of the case. That's what I think. I don't believe that uh, it's about any of us attributing blame to any of those who were accused, as you rightly said, innocent until proven guilty. However, we have a problem in the black community, brother, where so many crimes are left unsolved because we keep our mouths shut when we know the perpetrators, but we won't speak up. And in truth, we can't even rely on the Metropolitan Police or any of the other police forces up and down this country to solve these crimes. What we should have in the black community is our own investigative force within the black community who, when things like this happen, we can actually go out and investigate for ourselves, gather evidence for ourselves, so that in the end, we might stand a chance of actually bringing some of these perpetrators to justice. But unfortunately, we're not at that stage yet, which is again why I spend so much of my time calling on black men to come together, unite, so that we can actually build a viable black community with all of the components of a nation, all of the components that people need in order for us to be able to police our own communities. This will be the final question, and it, and it, and it is from um, and, Andrew Hart. Yet again, Andrew, the first part of this question is factually incorrect and it must be corrected. It's based on an assumption, and I'm not going to answer that question, it's silly, but I will read it out, but I'm not, it doesn't have to be answered. It says, ask him how he feels about Sasha being shot by people from her own community. That is factually incorrect. That's what I'm saying. There is no proof or evidence that Sasha has been shot by someone in her own community. No one has been prosecuted. Therefore, it's not fact. But I will ask, the, how do you feel about, so say that again, how to deal with black on black violence? in London gang, so how to deal with that? Well, I mean, what we've been told, what we've been reliably informed is that on the night of that particular gathering, that party, that masked men entered and shot. And in the, in the process, shot Sasha in the head. According to many who were there, they didn't say that these shooters were white, they said they were black. They said that they were masked or wearing dark clothing, but it would appear that they were people of color. And so it really doesn't surprise me. I am not shocked that they were black because this is what many of us do, unfortunately, in the black community where we will easily uh, hurt and maim, shoot and stab people who look like us, but we won't do it to other people who don't look like us. But this is based on miseducation, this is based on self-hatred, this is based on an indoctrination that we've been subject to for the last nearly 500 years. And so we shouldn't be shocked by this. What we should do is appreciate that there needs to be a re-education 
of our people out of this condition of self-hatred. We must learn to love one another. We must learn to understand that when you shoot your brother, you are shooting yourself. When you shoot, when you put down your sister, you're destroying yourself. When we continuously have this fratricidal mentality against one another, we are only hurting ourselves. And once we begin to appreciate that that person is actually my brother, that person is actually my sister. And this is why we use that language, by the way. That's why we don't use guy and, and, and bloke and all this. It's brother, sister. Very, it's very difficult, very difficult to hurt or to kill your brother. It's very difficult to do that to your sister. But when we use all of these, you listen to the language now that many of our young people have picked up from America where we want to refer to one another as dogs. See, it's easy to kick a dog. It's easy to do harm to a dog. But when you're talking about a brother or a sister, you're dealing with something completely different. And so, you know, brother, I would just encourage us to appreciate that uh, this type of thing will continue as long as we don't appreciate that we are indeed a family and that we've got to come together and that if we want to fight somebody, there's an enemy out there who's been fighting us for 500 years and we should turn and face him rather than keep on turning and facing each other in that angry, vicious, malicious way. But definitely my, definitely my final point, yeah, and it's not about this, I want you to tell me more about the school, and all of that great work you're doing with children? Well, again, you know, brother, it's not, uh, it's not a school that's my school or, or our school as such, but what it is, there are a number of different schools. There are a number of different uh, what they call Saturday schools or academies that black people, black parents who are concerned about the welfare, the well-being of their children, in these mainstream schools which we call the killing fields these schools that are never they've never been designed to educate the black boy or the black girl to bring out their leadership quality and their leadership potential and to allow them to become you know their optimum self so therefore parents and other uh, black people who love our children and recognize that without our children we have no future those people have taken it upon themselves and they've formed the Manhood Academy. They've formed WYLA. They've formed various um, Saturday academies and schools. And what I do as an, as an activist in the community is I go out and I try to support those. And in particular, I'm, I'm, I'm a great supporter of the WYLA. And that's what I do. I just support black people who are trying to support black children and really encourage them and do my very best to play my role in trying to help that process along. So that's really what it's about. And I would encourage more of our people to look at your children. And, and by the way, there's some new legislation about to come down whereby you can't even, most of my children have been home educated. I've educated my children in the home. But what, according to these new legislation that they're bringing in, um, you will have to gain permission from the government to be able to take your children and homeschool them. And so this is a problem because, you know, we, we want the right to be able to raise our children in the manner that would allow them to be their very best selves. And what we don't want is this type of indoctrination, which is now the order of the day where our children have been made confused, even about their gender and all manner of crazy stuff now that's been coming in from Europe and uh, been entering into the, into the school curriculum. And so I would encourage our people to look carefully at those institutions that your children are in and really think uh, deeply about homeschooling and also trying to get your child into one of the academies, one of the Saturday schools, where they can have their education supplemented by uh, black history, culture, and, you know, all of those, I mean, basic things like teaching children how to cook. 
teaching children how to clean their shoes, teaching children how to change a light bulb, basic skills that many of the young people today don't know. They know how to use their thumbs on a little keyboard on a phone or uh, you know a computer or whatever, which is which is which is a skill of itself, and it's not to be belittled. But nonetheless, there are so many other things, you know, outdoor activities, being fit and healthy, how to what foods to eat, eating the right foods, not living on sweets, things of this nature. So these are the types of practical things that many of these uh, Saturday academies do and um, you know I encourage our people to keep doing this because ultimately what we need is a whole school system okay we need a, a brand new educational paradigm for our children we cannot continue to force our children into these institutions where most of the time they, they, they're disliked within the institution just look at the reality of what happened to Child Q, and and that is that that's just the tip of the iceberg in terms of what really goes on with many black girls and black boys within the British curriculum, school curriculum system. What I would like to do is thank all of those who are who were on the chat and are on the chat for posing those questions, and I would also like to thank you, Brother Leo Mohammed, as normal, for giving me this opportunity to interview you as normal is great and one thing I do look forward to sir is your arrival I keep going on about it for you when you go back to Speaker's Corner because you said the weeds are growing and you need to chop down those weeds with your machette yes, sir. and I look forward yes, to sir. being there when you do that it's cultivation it's not violence yeah. when you see the farmer with his machete He's not a violent man, he's a cultivator. He, he is one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He, he is a husbandman. He is, he is trying to cultivate the land in such a way that the land can give nutrition to the members of the family who need that spiritual food. So when we come with our machete, we just come to get rid of those tears that have grown up among the wheat and are trying to choke out the life out of the good fruit. And once that's done, then we can get that word but you to know, our so people. I loved, when you told me that metaphor yes. three weeks ago, I laugh hard, man. And, and every time, you know I go to Speaker's Corner every week. Yes, sir. And I, and, and I send you the links. I don't know if you watch. Yes, but, I do watch. But, but, tell, but tell me, when you watch, what is your assessment of, of the debates that are taking place, and especially the behaviours? You're seeing down the street. I mean, you know, there are people there, brother, who are very intelligent people. There are people there, I believe, who mean well. There are people there who are trying their best to get a word across. However, the methodology oftentimes is lacking, and it, it, it's too chaotic and uh, too um, much of a free for all. And there are too many egos. You know, it's just ego, people just riding on egos and, and things of that nature. So it's not necessarily conducive to any real learning. And so when we come as members of the nation, we try to come in a much more orderly and organized fashion. And we genuinely desire to get a clear word across. And then the people can choose to do with it yeah. what they will. There's no compulsion. We're not there to try to bully anybody or browbeat anybody or force anybody. We're just there to try to offer some clarity when it comes to some of the issues that um, ill affect the members of the human family. So, thank you, brother. Thank you. Excellent. As normal, yes, sir. sir. Thank you very much. And I've no doubt we'll be engaging up there yes. later on. And don't forget, you tell people where they can find. Yes. But don't forget. But no, that's not. Yeah, I'm going to tell them up there. Yes. Yeah. Okay. They should be finishing right. soon, I think. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead, brother man. Yes, sir.
the drummers were here, the whole environment would have changed. Yeah, so I'd like to thank you all. Thank you. I'd like to thank my, my, my brothers, Brother Leo, Nation, because they are, to what I would say, like a foundation. They're reliable. They are the example within our community that we can rely upon. Yeah. In addition to that, obviously, I'd like to big up Street Mike. Yeah. I'd also like to say there aren't many of those posters, but you're welcome to take take them down for us. Yeah. Get a bit of me a souvenir. And as been said, we intend to carry on in the spirit of our warrior queen Sasha. Yeah, to make sure that our work continue in us, by us, in order to maintain and to build this community, okay? We're going to be relying upon the drums, and I must point out to you, there are some parakeets in those trees. Wherever we go, they follow us, yeah? Our next event, Thousand Drums, is going to be in the woods. And there's another event on the 19th of June, which I'll let you know about also. Come July, we've got our good brother, Dr. Williams. And uh, just keep your ears posted. Keep an eye on Street Mike also. 
But what is so memorable is that we've, I think, established a family. As you can see, a number of us are wearing a t-shirt because at the end of it, we're all at the end of our tether. Our backs against the wall. And when your backs against the wall, all you can do is take a stand. So we take a stand together. Now my sister here on the right, she's been in the background. Yeah, I want to say in the background, she's making sure that I do all that was necessary to be done. Okay, so I'd like for you to appreciate her. And again, in so far as the drummings are concerned, I'm in between two camps, one of which is not here today, but I'm with Grandpa as well as with Papa. Yes, for those of you are uh, within the drum family. I can see Marcus, Camila, Clyde, Sister Kaylee. Yeah. So we're a formidable family. Yeah. And we need to realize that number, which is a thousand. Yeah. Because when we have a magic number of a hundred, we're going to be awesome. Okay? So thank you for the energy. Be encouraged. We've now come to an end of this live stream and we thank you very much for watching and goodbye. So thank you very much for watching and goodbye.